I do this desktop? Okay. We. All right, let me get this stuff out of the way. All right, let's run through these. Wow, I made this small, didn't I? Sorry about that. Okay. All right. Um, let's take you through the people ops functional update and we'll have time at the end for questions. Um, I, although I would like to make this more interactive. So maybe we'll open up in between each section or each slide. Um, let's talk about accomplishments first. We rebranded the feedback survey for 2017 as our stay interview. We want to focus on a couple of, uh, of important things. And, and for Q1, we're gonna do this, uh, we're gonna publish this quarterly going forward. Our first one we launched in February, but for Q1, we focused on why people join, why they stay, and what would, if, if something were to happen, what would it be to incite maybe some consideration to leave? We also added uh, some feedback uh, opportunity about the summit that we've published separately. We're, we're uh, providing that feedback to the summit planners first so that they can digest it and then we'll publish that on the summit page um, after we have an opportunity to go through that with them, with the team. Um, but let's talk a, a little bit about um, the three focuses, the why, why people join, why people stay, and um, if something were to occur, what would, what would make people be, um, consider leaving? We, we, sur we surveyed everybody. We got 91 people to participate. 57% of the organization is now participating. That's awesome. 91 is triple the normal. Um, however, uh, it's still only half the company. So I'm going to encourage everyone, um, whether you believe you have something um, to add or not, please uh, participate going forward because your voice is important to us. The feedback we received was sincere, honest and direct, mostly constructive and actionable, many compliments. And we appreciate that you appreciate our work um, and it's great to hear those things. It's, you know, as, as many constructive criticisms and comments that we get on things that can change, we get an equal number of, you're doing great, and we really appreciate that. And I just wanna, wanna say thank you for, for uh, the team works very hard, and there's a lot of things on the plate, so thank you. Um, your feedback was helpful in guiding us to what needs our attention the most, and what needs to get on the list. Um, we because the feedback is getting um, more, um, it's getting longer and it, it's, it's getting more consistent, we've moved the um, feedback page off of the culture page. It was really just you know, scrolling down and down and down. So we, we put that on, a link off of that culture page and uh, we've put that here for you. Um, it has been merged so you can go and take a look at the feedback, the summary of the feedback. We did paraphrase, we did summarize, but it was really important that we um, meet the expectation of the organization. We'd gotten several pieces of feedback in the, um, uh, on Slack that people were anxious to have the results. And we, we got some feedback that you know, the survey should be shared uh, as a whole. And unfortunately, we just can't do that. We have to protect the people that participate. We make it anonymous on purpose. It is truly anonymous. If you don't put your contact information in, we have no idea who said what. However, people write in styles and, and if people have said something on Slack that they um, uh, may also say in the survey, it could, we could easily connect the dots and we don't want that to happen. So we have only paraphrased or summarized where there are consistent messages. Um, where we felt that it was, um, we, we wanted to get the message across. But I am asking everyone, if you feel that you were not heard, that your message was not clearly translated based on what we published in the, in the handbook, please reach out to me directly. Create a Calendly, let's talk for 20, 25 minutes uh, as to your concerns, 
I'd really like to hear them. And I'd really like to take away um, the, the action items that you know, we might either let you know what we're working on or um, let you know where it is on the list, uh, the to-do list, and um, get a chance to really have that conversation. I don't want people to feel like they don't have a voice and I don't want people to feel like Slack is their voice. Um, sometimes short messages come across and put, put us on the defense and we shouldn't be on the defense. We should be um, communicating changes and communicating what, you know, what is going on and what we're feeling and um, in a positive way. So I'll open this up for um, questions if there's anything I can't see. Uh, I haven't figured out how to share and see at the same time. So let me take a minute and see if anybody has anything they want to ask in particular. I'll look back at the, uh, at the chat here in a minute when I stop sharing, so we can also do it that way. Okay, let's take a look at the concerns. Um, recent accusations of misconduct in highly visible organizations that, um, like Uber, have raised our awareness that we need to clarify our position. We have drafted a zero tolerance policy. Abby actually did a lot of work on this, a lot of, a lot of research on this for us. I'm going to um, work through and work with Sid and the executive team to make sure that we're all in agreement, um, which the executive team has absolutely, I've had this conversation with Yob, I've had this conversation with Sid, um, there is a zero tolerance policy for any behavior resembling harassment of any kind. And that's, that is in, not in question at all. Uh, just need to get the policy down in, in words and get it published so that everyone is very clear of the expectation and of the, um, of, of the comfort that this organization will not tolerate any kind of harassment. We're also building out a, a process where we can take claims, concerns, and complaints that someone wants to lodge anonymously. We're not a brick and mortar company, so normally you'd have an 800 number or a phone number for somebody to call and, and, and process, you know, put, put their message on. Um, we took this actually an extra step and thought, well, if we have some kind of recording mechanism, we might know somebody's voice because that's what we really get to know, right, over, over the uh, hangouts and the, and the Zoom calls that we're on. So, we're trying to, we're researching uh, maybe an agency that can take calls for us and they can just turn it into the, the, um, the, the words, right? That they can convey to us the message and we don't get the recordings. We think that might be the, the best way to take in um, anonymous claims. Now, people can, we'll have, we will have a process by which people can stand up and say, hey, I saw this happen and give us the, your information. It's, it's most important that we actually get the information, but we, what helps in an investigation, so the process would include an investigation, what, what will help Abby and I is that we know who is lodging the complaint so that we can get a full statement. Um, however, we don't wanna curb that from happening, so we'll have that extra outlet. We're still working on building that out. Um, I'm hoping that by the end of March, we have that piece built out, but the policy will come out hopefully in the next two weeks. What are we planning on? We are, uh, we need to do some work on OKRs, obviously. We um, put them in place, and I fully admit that uh, with everything that's gone on, I have not paid attention to OKRs as I would like to, as I planned or would, should have or would like to have. So I'm going to go back and, and revisit that to remind everyone that team members and managers should be tracking progress in Lattice, that we um, review the participation and the goal attainment so that we have insight as to whether our goals were set too high or too low, that we make sure that everyone understands the process and is participating actively in the process. This is becoming part of one-on-one -on -one discussions on hopefully at minimum a bi-weekly basis not a monthly or, a, or quarterly, worse than that, a quarterly basis, because our OKRs are quarterly. We're de we designed the OKR approach to drive results and, and very specific and focused results. So we're, we really need to figure out if that's what we're able to do with OKRs. And so we'll open up a feedback mechanism, uh, a, an issue, so that we can discuss what went well, what didn't go well, 
and we'll make improvements for Q2 and then further improvements as we go down. We fully expected that it was going to take us a year to improve this process to, to be fully functional and, and successful and useful. So we, though we walked into it with um, expectations that it would have an immediate effect we know this is not a sprint, it's a marathon to get everyone on board and to get this uh, in, a, in a smooth working process for the organization. We will open up Q2 AKR, OKR planning the week of March 20th. I need to work with the executive team first to review and confirm the company goals. And then from that, we'll ask all of the managers to drill down and make sure that everyone on their teams has goals that shoot off of the company goals for Q2. We're also working on implementing an annual merit administration process. I know we talked about this when we implemented the, the comp calculator. We've been working on adjusting people that are outside of the range for the comp calculator. And um, we, I think we made a, um, a hopeful promise that we would institute an annual merit administration process in the spring and we are still shooting for that. So I am working on the requirements this week. I wanted to define what requirements were for this because though it's extremely um, uh, comfortable and, and um, a normal process for what I do, it is not something that maybe you have dealt with or have experienced before. So I wanted to be sure we put that out what those requirements are, meaning what are the decisions, what are the business rules that we're creating. And, and I'm, I'm working through those by next week with the executive team. Um, we'll roll this out to managers for input. It will be by Google Sheets. We don't have, we're not big enough to have a system to, to help us with this. So Brittany and Ernst are gonna help me put together um, Google Sheets that make this process as easy as possible for managers to participate in and to give us back responses quickly. So. This is a new process to the organization, and um, I'll, Brittany and I will be here to help, and Abby will be here to help through the whole thing, but it is something that we feel strongly that we want to roll out pretty quickly and, and um, meet the promises that we put out that we would really take this uh, into account for, for 2017. We're also developing new curriculum in Grovo. We're introducing new leadership development and IC courses at the end of March. So I'm gonna move on. Uh, I'll stop sharing um, so that uh, I can see who, um, who's asking questions. And um, so if you will, uh, let's see, stop sharing, there we go. Uh, let me look at chat. And I just volunteer, or if you will volunteer, if I'm, uh, there's a lot in here. So if I miss something, um, please, chime in. Um, how's the global recruiter search going? Going really well. Um, Sasha is putting together her short list after um, screening and that, that short list will go to the people ops team, which is what we did before. And then the, the global recruiter, as Sasha reminded me, um, goes through a very extensive interview process through most of our hiring managers. Um, and so we put together that list and they will come to me before they go to that group, hopefully only sending through the top three candidates to our hiring managers so that we can make a decision um, in the next, if I'm meeting with them at the end of this week or early next, then hiring managers, I'd say it's probably two weeks away from a decision. Uh, so, right, so we're, we call the, the job recruiter, although we're a global company, and, and so we just simplified the title. It's really about, you know, the recruiter will be a global recruiter, um, but it's called recruiter on the website. Um, can we do a LinkedIn post like we did for the SDR? Um, we've actually got great candidates, and if those candidates are not, the pipeline is really full of great candidates, but if we don't find the perfect match, then absolutely, as Sasha said, we can do that, not a problem. Do we care about the location? We did post uh, for this recruiter to be in the San Francisco Bay Area. I absolutely understand we're a remote-only company, um, but this was a specific request so that we ha would have someone with knowledge of startups, knowledge of the, uh, the network, and ability to connect us 
with many of the uh, technical resources that are right there in the Bay Area. Whether we hire from the Bay Area going forward or whether we're just connected to people and other organizations that are, are global or, or that are startups. Um, it was a decision that we made to, re to really first look for the person in the Bay Area. Um, people ops in the US. So we have a second position posted, the um, employment administrator, and that is not a, a US centric position at all. We do have time zone requirements for support so that we can get contracts out and so that we can get um, the support that we need, that the recruiters will need. However, I don't have a problem with that position being hired anywhere in the, in the globe, as long as they will support the mountain and Pacific time um, that we've asked. All right. I don't have a draft. Um, ZJ of the misconduct policy because I haven't done a thorough review of it and I actually have to because it's a legal policy I have to send it to our legal counsel to make sure that it is not headed in the wrong direction as soon as I do that um, and I have something that has been approved by legal then I'm happy to, to share that policy let's see yep Mark I get you um, more applicant stuff. If I've missed something, let me know. Conversation between Sean and Mark about the applicant. Um, Eleron. Yep, yep. Great question. The way you it there, John, made sense. Say it again. I think the way that you phrased it made sense. We were just kind of caught up in the chat about whether we're hiring an SF as a preference yeah. versus the network and everything else you said makes sense. Yep, that, that's a direction I've been given. Actually, the board gave us that, uh, that direction and, and gave us an option, but it, it is, you know, when I talked about it with Sid, it was, it's a great idea, right? Connect us with people that are in the same um, position that we are. Clement, for the annual merit administration process, will the uh, FE team help me, FE team? The front end. Front, end. front end specific. Okay. All right. Um, levels defined. Jacob is still clear. So, so if we're talking about, um, yes, we're looking at all of that right now. This is brand new and there's a lot of pieces that will not be perfect, but we're, our attempt here is to be consistent and to bring data to a consistency as we, as we roll this out. So Brittany and I will be spending this week um, with the basic rules and identifying where we need to uh, have some attention um, in the, we are using the comp calculator as a, as a piece of the formula. Um, there'll be a review of where everybody is in their junior, intermediate, senior level, as well as experience. One of the things we're going to do is go out to uh, managers and we're going to confirm people's experience level from a um, performance perspective, right? From a perspective of actual, uh, rather than just where they fall in the calculator, but we want to know where this person is in the experience factor um, categories based on really what the, their comparison of peers and what they have, um, uh, what they have uh, from a performance perspective. Does that answer your question, Clement? Yep, thank you. Awesome. James, what would make you leave? It's hard to tell if any of these were things. So um, James is saying that from looking at what would make you leave, what we did there was we looked at, and, and they, they were phrased, I think, very carefully, James, to tell us that if this were to change, I would consider leaving. So I, Brittany and I siphoned through these and pulled out literally, that's why, the, that's why there's so many. There were, there were a lot of great concerns and our focus is going to be, you know, on if the culture changes significantly, this might not be a good fit for me. Okay, then our goal is that our culture, people like the culture and we need to work on, on keeping it as similar to that, that core culture as possible as we grow. And so those, we agree that the next survey will not ask the same questions. Um, we feel like that's a great question to know 
what would make you leave so that we can focus on those things in the background, but we will ask three different questions. We are gonna keep the survey short and we'll not ask again, why would you join? Because we're not gonna ask the same question again. And we wouldn't, we're not gonna ask you what would make you leave, at least not maybe, but once a year. We'll focus on two other areas in the same kind of vein, right? We're gonna maybe hone in on some things. Um, the annual merit will not touch on stock options at all. The annual merit is a merit administration process for base salary only. No incentives and no stock options involved. Um, what are you doing with the feedback from? What would make you leave? I think I just talked about that. If I didn't, somebody wanna chime in, that's fine. The actionable items taken from the survey are towards the bottom. Somebody has a comment? Open to mic. No? Oh, okay. Um, actionable items taken from the survey, those are at the bottom. Those are uh, a work in progress, let me call it um, carefully. I wanted to respond to the fact that we were, we wanted to get this out. We'd had several people ask, where are the results? We don't, we didn't want to continue that discussion that we were massaging the results that had, it was not the case. It was just a timing. It was just being able to look at them and translate them and paraphrase and summarize them. So um, the actionable items are all at the bottom. Hopefully we've answered, but we do owe you um, issues and links to the handbook. Um, again, I, I opted for getting this done so we could talk about it today rather than making it perfect and um, Brittany and the team, Abby and I and Sasha, will go in and put links to everything that has um, a question and uh, something that we can link to. Mark says, oh, no, Eleron, uh, answering Eleron. Sean, Eleron, um, if I'm, again, if I'm missing something, let me know. While Robert says, why no stats about how often you saw a particular response? Um, I can count the number. Let, let me give you a stat that I did pick out right away. Sid and I talked recently about the leverage that the handbook gives us and to, to people that are uh, potential candidates. And it didn't sink in until I saw the, the results of the survey. The number of times that the handbook appeared in the very first question, what, would, you know, what caused you to join or what would interested you or why did you join? the most used word was handbook, which I thought was really awesome. It, it drove that point home for me. Um, could we go back and tell you how many times a word was used? Yes, I didn't think that was effective because we pointed out whether a, uh, whether a comment was made once or made a number of times. And at first, I cautioned the team to uh, put everything that was just mentioned once because one out of 160 may not be relevant but we talked through it and we felt like it was important for every voice to be heard. So that was the logic behind that, Robert. Um, if you want to talk about it further, I'm open for more discussion on that. Um, Jim says, do we feel like we missed an opportunity to pull good people out of Uber? Well, we haven't missed any opportunities. Um, there's more and more coming out on social media. We can certainly look to source if there are great candidates in the engineering group um, that are leaving Uber. Um, so that's, it's an opportunity I don't think is missed, but I think it's certainly out there for us. Mark, um, currently as a hiring manager, I see applicants. Can you, Mark, chime in so I'm not reading this whole thing? <clears throat> yeah, sure. So uh, I get applications and I see a photo and a name and probably a time zone. Um, and I know there's been a lot of studies about removing biases by hiding all that information. I was wondering if it would be possible for us to do something like that. I mean, in particular, I see a photo and, and they probably didn't even put it in the resume. It came from LinkedIn. And so we're just grabbing it and I see the photo. And it's great when I'm having a conversation with them, but probably not great when screening them. Um, so that was my comment. And then there's some details there about time zones. Sometimes that is important, but it probably should be specified as a job requirement if it's specific time zones. And as long as they qualify in that time zone, then I probably shouldn't be aware of even what time zone they're in. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, I, these are all great considerations. I agree, you know, in the screening process that we, um, you know, we can let our unconscious bias um, jump in there. 
um, you, you kind of bring two things to the table and I'll be quick because we have four minutes and I want to make sure we open it up to for everybody to, to say last questions or last thoughts. Um, we are in the midst. I've asked Sasha to work on some content for us uh, under diversity and inclusion that will include unconscious bias to educate all of us. And so she'll be coming out with some some Grovo content um, end of March, early April uh, to help us with that. But your, your points are valid, right? That if we have unconscious bias, that we're just not, not um, even admitting to ourselves, those things can, can pose a problem. Let's, uh, unfortunately, Workable is not a great tool. And, and I didn't really realize that until recently when the recruiters made it very clear to me that it's not. We are looking at other tools. There, are, there is an expense to that implementation. SID's behind you know, getting a great tool, but we've got to fit in um, you know, our, our day job and looking for that tool at the same time. Sasha's doing a great job at that. So I think we'll have more opportunity for things like for, for choices and things like that um, and setting up better processes when we get into a better tool. Sasha, you can chime in if, if there is, uh, you know, if you have some ideas on this, maybe we open an issue so we can discuss it further and, um, the, you know, all great ideas and great thoughts. I think there's some more um, information about um, you know how what people include and don't include and those are our great pieces of information for us I want to open up while we have two minutes left does anybody have any other questions that didn't get addressed did I miss anything fantastic I hope we provided a, a good update for you um, this time and um, had some really, really great information uh, come through on the survey. We really, really appreciate your participation, your honesty, and your constructive feedback. We're going to do our best to continue to roll out great programs and pay attention to what you think is important and look forward to talking to you again next time. Have a great day.